Oh, a pot. Hmm. That didn't sound right. Is that a hang fire? I heard a poof. Good to be a hang fire. Huh, it shot. I know what it was. I bet since we're doing a video on uh, squib loads, that's a squib load because I loaded a squib load. Let's make sure it's a squib load. Come on up here to the table. Yeah, you ever heard of anybody loading intentionally a squib load? Let's put this down the barrel so we don't have to look down the barrel and make sure. Aha, yep, the snake won't come out. That tells me there's a round, a bullet lodged, stuck in the barrel. That's why it didn't come out. Yours truly loaded a squib load for the video. Pretty good, huh? I, I pat myself on the back, I'll tell you, because it's not easy to load around with just enough velocity to get into the barrel and not get out. I've been working on that, okay? So because this is an important subject and uh, we wanted you to, uh, we need to talk about it, okay, put it that way. Now this is a squib rod and uh, to demonstrate, for sure, yeah, that barrel is lodged, it is stuck. Okay, now, I didn't want to look down the barrel because even though it would be totally safe, uh, because here's the case, there's the primer fired. Uh, the only thing that's in the barrel right now is lead, okay? There's nothing that can be in that barrel uh, except inert lead, all right? So it's, it's in there. Let's drive it out and make sure, okay? But before we do that, before I even get it out of there, look what could have happened. Uh, squib loads are kind of rare, but when they happen, they're not as rare with hand loads. Uh, it can be really, really dangerous. And we've been remiss in not doing a video on this topic. We tried to, I don't know, it's been a year maybe, and I'd loaded up some squ squib loads, I thought, and primers, no powder. And, I, and the first time I did, oh, perfect, got this effect. And then the, it wouldn't repeat itself. And oh man, we'll do it later. But we need to talk about it because you probably have witnessed one. You know, if you've been around a lot of shooting, around shooting ranges a lot, you may have had it happen to yourself. And there's a lot on the web about it. I've seen some other videos on it, but we've not done anything on it. And you know, we've got a large audience, and a lot of new shooters, and a lot of people just getting into firearms, maybe just getting into competition. And it really could be something that you have missed in your experience as a shooter. You just haven't seen it. You've not. You've never seen it happen to anybody. You maybe didn't even know it existed. You're not seeing any information on our videos or anything. So, all right, let's take care of that. Uh, could be a gap in your learning experiences here. So there's a bullet lodged in that barrel. Now look what could have happened. What if I had had six rounds in there and you know, that was what the third one. So I shot the cowboy twice, pow, pow. I go poof, you know, on the pot. Now, I don't know, what was that about? You know, I, I don't think too much about it and I'd fire again. They were firing into the pot, whatever I do. I had more ammo. What if they were hot magnums? Those happened to be 38 specials I had, which is not good either, uh, plus peas. But I could be shooting some really hot 357 magnums and the third round do that. And then I go, bam! You tell me what's going to happen. It's never good to have a plugged barrel. Have you ever seen one that's been blown up, whether it's a shotgun barrel or a, a handgun or a rifle, whatever it is, or the gun blown up? It sometimes doesn't just blow up the barrel or bulge the barrel, blows out the cylinder, blow, and it can blow your hand off. It could kill you as the shooter. I mean, it's just that simple. It's, it's something we probably don't talk about enough, any of us in the shooting world, it should be one of the very first lessons, and I think it is in a lot of uh, education courses regarding you know, shooting. So we want to do our part on this. Uh, again, it's most likely when you're shooting hand loads, because either you, the hand loader, or someone you've got hand loads from, which is not a good idea, uh, they just didn't get enough powder in a round. It's probably more dangerous than having a double charge, it, uh, depending on what the, the load is. Both could be very dangerous, but having a little too much powder might just give you extra recoil and wow what was that magnum it might not hurt the gun it might uh but shooting around into a barrel that is totally plugged that is never going to be good let's get it out of there okay so i've got my tools here this is uh, this is designed kind of for that it's a hard polymer and uh 
and it'll just hammer it out of there. At least it should. That one is tough. Well, I'll tell you, that one is. I, I have had several of these. Of course, I haven't shot them out of this Smith and Wesson. Uh, I've shot them out of the Ruger. I had them lodged in the Ruger barrel and in my uh, 686, but not this particular gun. There we go. Once you get it moving a little bit, boy, it's tight. And I don't want to lose it. There we go. There's the bullet. Didn't make it too far, did it? Look at that rifling. Yeah, it's in good shape. <laughs> it ought to be. It didn't hit anything. It just got into the barrel. Uh, yeah, really, I've been uh, loading, not that you care, but I, I loaded up a bunch of these. I thought it, it, what I was experiencing and in, uh, in getting Rave to do this video, in my preparation, was sometimes they'd get out the barrel, you know, <laughs> and sometimes they would just not even get out of the cylinder and lock up the cylinder. And I wanted one to lodge in the barrel, and that's what we achieved on the first shot. First take is great. Uh, so that's what happens that's not good. And the reason I wanted it in the, in the barrel, uh, if it locks up your cylinder, let's say that same thing, poof, you know, oh, that didn't sound right, what's going on? Occasionally, it won't even, it'll be in the forcing cone and it didn't, didn't get quite into there enough and you can't even open the cylinder. You can't turn the cylinder, it locks up the gun, which is a good thing. Because that, that keeps you from just going ahead and shooting again, right? So that's, that's ideal. Or if it gets out the barrel, even if it just barely had gotten to the pot, clay pot, at least it's out the barrel, right? And if it had hit the pot, I would have known, okay, clear, guns, it's okay, you know. So, but when it's in the middle there, that's bad because the gun continues to function, all right? That's what a squib round is. It comes from having too, uh, too small amount of powder, not enough powder. And it could be something in your powder measure, uh, you know, gets hung up a little bit, a cobweb in there or something, moisture's gotten to your powder and something keeps uh, the proper amount from falling into your case and you didn't check the case and all that sort of thing. Typically, you know, if it's a progressive loader and you're putting out a lot of rounds, that could happen. Uh, it's, it's obviously that anybody who shoots much and understands physics, it has to be a really scary thing. A really scary thing. You, you've seen probably you know, movies or cartoons where someone gets their shotgun barrel plug, whether it's Elmer Fudd or whoever, and the gun blows up. You know, that's real. That's real. You can't be shooting bullets into other bullets. Uh, in fact, these are, I, I put these in a bag and I labeled it squib loads, okay, so that I don't mix those up with anything else. So I got some more there. Maybe we'll shoot some more of that before we finish here. Okay, and in one way you can tell, a safe way to tell for sure, if you think something's up, you could keep this in your pocket, I guess, at the range, but you just drop that in. That's a snake, of course, for cleaning. If it goes all the way through, it tells you there's no bullet in there, right? And it keeps you from having to, uh, you know, look down the barrel. It, you know, makes somebody nervous, like yourself. All right, so, not good. Uh, in an automatic, semi-automatic pistol, same thing. If it gets into the, say I'm shooting along, and I get that same thing. Oh, that didn't sound right. What's that about? Uh, and the slide didn't come back. Well, I don't know. Did I get a bad primer? Was there an empty chamber? Because I tell you, here's the other thing. You have your ears on tight. It may make the sound that one made, and you don't hear it. I have seen these uh, happen. I've done them and intentionally. Sometimes with just the primer, it will throw the bullet into the, the barrel. Okay, and you don't hear it, it's just a click. It's really weird. Doesn't make a sound, not even the poof you heard before. And so, you know, with your ears on, you're definitely not gonna suspect anything. You don't, well, you know, well, you know, empty chamber, I thought I had a round in there. Well, and what you actually did was you sent a bullet into the barrel. And if it gets past the chamber, the next round will chamber okay. So if you're not careful, what you would do is you're shooting along, bam, 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 click. What's that about? I thought I must have the mags loose or something. So you just, you know, bam, bam, and you go on shooting. You're in a match, you know, where every second counts. And so you do the old tap rack bang and you know, continue shooting. That's why you really got to be tuned into it. If you don't take anything else from this video, have your brain programmed to at least think about the possibility of a squib load or hang fire. Because, uh, you know, it could be either one. The squib load, uh, 
probably more dangerous. I don't know either one because it's not good if you don't uh, anticipate it and suspect it. So you have to suspect it. It has to be up here in your brain as a possibility in your consciousness anytime you're shooting or you're likely to just do that. You're shooting along and it click. What was that? Because it will just be a click sometimes. Let me emphasize that. Just a click. It won't just be a, a lower sounding you know, a blast. Okay. And so it could be a bullet in your barrel. So you do a deal quick fix and bang, and there you have fired into another bullet and boom, blow up your gun. Okay, maybe blow you up. All right, so with a, so a semi-automatic, you know, a little bit of a different deal there. So if you think you had one, uh-oh, click. I had ammo, I know I had ammo, good ammo, you know. Uh, so you, you need to, you can take it apart, of course, and take the barrel out and look. But you need to check. You need to check and see what's going on there. Because you look in the chamber, what's going to happen with semi-automatic is it's not going to have enough power, probably, if it's really a squib load, to uh, cycle a slide. So that's your first indicator. And when you do, you'll find a, a, a spent case there if the round is in the barrel, right? The bullet's in the barrel, and uh, you drop the magazine first. But, you know, so you should be able to diagnose that. But the biggest danger is that you just keep shooting. Same with a revolver. You know, either one, you just keep shooting and you put another round into a blocked barrel. So you gotta, gotta suspect it. You know, in training, lots of times that's what you get. You know, tap rack bang and keep going. You know, uh, be on the alert for a squib load because it doesn't matter uh, in terms of training. You, you don't wanna blow yourself up. If you're in a real shootout, somebody's shooting at you and you actually have to pull the trigger on somebody, think about how rare that event is. Uh, if somebody is trying to kill you and you actually have to pull the trigger and then you get a squib load, don't worry about it. It'd be my advice in that case. You're, you're in trouble. You know, if you get a squib load the, the one day that someone comes to try to kill you, uh, it wasn't your best day, right? You were meant to, to be in trouble <laughs> that day, so I wouldn't worry about it in that case. But if you're training or you're in a match, hey, forget about winning the match. Forget about where you place. You don't want to blow yourself up. All right, so program your brain to, to be aware of it and to, uh, for it to click in your brain if, you, if it clicks in your gun or you get a poof, okay? Keep that in mind. You'll generally get a different sound, just like I got there. It's kind of a poof. Do you see the smoke? Uh, and the slide won't, won't cycle on a semi-automatic. So there's gonna be a different reaction. Be in tune with your firearm. You know how it sounds when it fires, whatever you're firing. You know how it feels. So if something doesn't, doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right to you at all, stop what you're doing. If you're standing next to somebody at range, you're a range officer, you know, that's why you have range commands. You shout out, stop. You see it happening with somebody else, you're out shooting in the woods with somebody, whatever, you know, just, just be aware of it. The, the squib load, the squib round, it, it can be lethal. It can be lethal. Uh, watch when you're hand loading, you know, whatever you're doing, take all the precautions necessary to make sure you've got powder in each round in the correct amount of powder, okay? Because that's generally where it happens most often. Not so much with factory ammo, but it can and it has, okay? So squib, that's the, the lesson for today, the safety lesson to, to always be aware of and uh, just have it uh, up there in the back of your head, with, whether it's you shooting or somebody you're with, uh, when something just doesn't seem right, stop what you're doing and check it carefully, okay? And then you've got the right tools. It's not a problem to get out. It's kind of hard sometimes, but the main thing is, is know that's what's happened, okay? So, don't be a squib. Uh, hope, uh, hope that helps a little bit. Uh, we want to shoot safely and uh, have fun shooting and not risk our, our hands, you know, or our eyes, you know, as we're doing it. Life is good. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I'm sure if you didn't, we'll be hearing from you. But while you're here, I want to make sure you guys are aware of SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a fully accredited online distance learning program where you can get certified in gunsmithing with hands-on experience and also an associate's degree in firearms technology. And they are very accepting of GI Bill too. They work a lot with veterans. So go over to uh, sdi.edu and check them out. See if that's something that you're interested in. And also, while you're going out on the interwebs and looking at things like that, 
Don't forget the Hickok 45 Facebook if you're a Facebook kind of guy. Um, check that out, Hickok 45 Facebook. Also, uh, the real Hickok 45 on Instagram and Hickok 45 on Twitter. Don't forget to check that out. And also, we have a website now, Hickok45.com. Try to keep it simple for you guys, and especially those of you in Kentucky, www.Hickok45.com. You can go over there and find out about all kinds of different things that we're doing. Uh, we've got links to uh, the people that, that support our channel. We've got uh, links to our store. We have uh, merchandise, t-shirts and hats and different things over there if you want to check that out. So go to Hickok45.com. Most of everything is over there. Also, if you want to see some other content that you can't find on this specific channel, you can go to the Hickok45 and Son YouTube channel where that's you know, mostly me doing stuff over there and dad makes uh, an occasional uh, appearance over there. And also I have a Facebook, John Hickok on Facebook. You can also find the link to that in the description of the Hickok 45 and Son videos. And speaking of that, don't forget to check out the description of the Hickok 45 videos for any information about meet and greets and all that kind of stuff. Also don't forget to check us out on Full 30. And if you've done all of that, all of those things, if you've completed all of that, then the only thing left to do is to watch a bunch more Hickok 45 videos. So I'll leave you to it and I'm going to finish painting these targets.